Okay, so we've got 5 times x minus 2 minus, in parentheses, 3x plus 4 equals 3 times 6x minus 8 plus 10. So what we're going to do, everyone, is simplify both sides, and then we'll start to solve it. So first step, simplify both sides. I'm just going to write down simplify, and then we will solve. So that's the kind of shorthand way of remembering your steps. Simplify and then solve. That's supposed to say solve. S-O-L-V-E. Um, so we've got some distributive properties to do, like there's a 5 outside the parentheses here. So we're going to mu multiply that guy in, and that gives you 5x, and then 5 times negative 2 minus 10. Okay with that? Yes. And then we have a negative outside this parenthesis. And I want everyone to write that as negative 1, because that will help us with our distributive property, because we need to actually multiply in with a negative 1 to get, like, negative 3x minus 4. So distributing a negative 1. And then over here, we just take our 3 and multiply that in with the distributive property to get 18x, and then 3 times negative 8, negative 24, and then we still have the plus 10. So that is taking care of all of the distributive properties. Multiply in the 5, multiply in negative 1, multiply in 3. All okay with that? Yes. So anyone watching for home, feel free to press pause and do the rest yourself and then check the answer, of course. But I'll go through it now. So the next step is to add like terms. And on the left, we have the two x terms and two numbers. So we've got a 5x minus a 3x. 5x's minus 3x's, 2x's. And then a negative 10 minus 4. Like that's... I'm in debt $10, I spend $4, I'm in debt by $14. And on the right, you've got 18x minus 24 plus 10. That's an 18x just all on its own, but we can combine these two numbers. Negative 24 plus 10. That's 24 bad guys, 10 good guys, negative 14, right? So at this point, everybody, there's lots of things you can do, but we, we, we're done with simplifying. That's the point, because like 2x and negative 14 cannot be put together because they're not like terms. 18x and negative 14, you can't put them together, they're not like terms. So we're done with simplifying, now we need to solve. And at this point, everyone, there's lots of ways of doing it. You could subtract 2x from both sides and keep going. So Add 14 to both sides and keep going, that would be fine. And you can subtract 18 from both sides and keep going. So, or 18x, I mean, subtract 18x from both sides. So there's lots of ways of doing it. And there's no correct way, as long as you get the correct answer in the end, you do the same thing to both sides and you should be fine. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides just for fun to see what happens. And that 2x minus 2x is 0. Now, I have a negative 14 on the left, not a positive, it's a negative 14, and that equals 16x minus 14. And now, to get x on its own, x has been multiplied by 16, so I might want to get rid of the negative 14 here, so I might want to add 14. Okay with that? So negative 14 plus 14 is actually 0. And guys, don't be afraid to write down 0, because this is 0 and that's 0, and we get 0 equals 16x. Or 0 equals 16 times x. So now to get x on its own, we've got to divide by 16. And 0 over 16, 0. 16x over 16 is just x. So x equals 0 is our answer. I got the same answer, so I'm good. 
So um, just to remind you guys that there's lots of ways, like at this point, there's lots of ways of doing it. Like, for example, if you subtracted 18x, I'll just run through this really quick, you would still get x is 0, because this is negative 16x minus 14 equals negative 14. And then I add 14, and I get negative 16x equals 0. And then I divide by negative 16, and I get x is 0. So, like, there's lots of ways of doing it from that point on, but you should get x equals 0 as long as you do the same thing to both sides.